thank you disclaimer, dive right into it. Um, as Brian mentioned, we have a very solid core with a uh, shareholder uh, of IDECO, O3 Mining, Quebec Institutions and Board of Management. And the long-term retail investors that you see there, well, they've been with us for over 15 years. So there's really about 40% of, of the float that's uh, free. Uh, market cap of 31.5. We have a cash position of just under $7 million, which is more than enough to get our current drill program done. And we've been recently trading around 10 cents. We have a very, very small team. And um, so it's myself, the VP, Gita, uh, and Rana. And we manage uh, between 25 and 30 different contractors. And as you'll see, we've dedicated all that to the, our flagship project at Chimo Mine. And we are in the process of obtaining um, um, ESG Eco Logo certification. You've seen this slide uh, by Brian a few minutes ago. We have two groups of properties, one that's in the uh, windfall, uh, what I call the uh, emerging windfall mining district, uh, the Benoit project, Fenton, and um, the Wilson project, and our flagship project that sits along the Cadillac break there to the south. And that'll be the core, the rest of the presentation. Uh, we focus 100% of our attention there. All right. so. The, the key point last year is that we uh, consolidated with O3 Mining. We had acquired the Chimo Mine Project, the past producing Chimo Mine Project, uh, through a bankruptcy sale, paid $261,000 for the, the asset. Um, but it was basically a postage stamp size project. Um, upon acquiring the project, the microphone's going out. Can you hear me? All right. So upon acquiring the project, uh, we attracted the attention of Ignico Eagle. Uh, took us two years to model the historic data. There's over 4,000 drill holes and 60,000 assays there. Uh, 2016, they took a 19% stake in us. And then we never looked back. We raised uh, $17 million and um, produced uh, four resource estimates. And we're currently working on a PEA. Uh, by late 2021, uh, our, we started discussing with O3 Mining, and uh, we the bulk of 2022, uh, where Brian mentioned we had a, a lack of news flow, was dedicated to, you know, completing the transaction with O3, getting Agnico to top up their percentage, uh, completing a consolidated resource assessment on the um, on the um, the newly accrued ground and um, launching a drill program and taking the handbrake off the PA we had initiated on our, you know, our Chimo Mine project. So you can see where the project is situated right along the Cadillac Fault. We now own about 40 kilometers of the Cadillac Fault. And off to the east there, you can see the, there's a Canadian Mill Arctic and the Gold X Mill owned by Nico, uh, the Kina Mill owned by West Dome the uh, Lamac mill owned by El Dorado, and then, then there's Orbell and Beacon. So it's a sizable land position, which basically covers the same strike length between Valdo and Canadian Mill Arctic, where there's, you know, two dozen mines and maybe a few tens of millions of, of gold production there. The consolidation basically was to eliminate the boundaries and acquire more mineralization, as you'll see in the next slides. So I'm going to focus the next slides, I'm going to keep drilling down until I get to where we're drilling right now. So a focus on the property itself. There's a 40 kilometer strike length and you could see those little red bars. Well, those are historically demonstrated drill intersections and, and gold occurrences over a strike length of about 15 kilometers. You can see where the former uh, Chimo Mine property was and the East Cadillac property. We now call that the Chimo Mine project. Uh, immediately upon consolidating, we had to, you know, do a restatement of both resource estimates, combining the West Nordo deposit to ours. So we have 720,000 ounces in the indicated category and 1.3 or 1.6 million in inferred, uh, all within, you know, operable distance of the underground shaft and, and, and drifts. Prior to the acquisition, we had initiated some PEA work. We had done some shaft haulage capacity. Uh, uh, demonstration, scope design, and sequencing, but 
of, of, of the, real, the real highlight in, in our stuff was the ore sorting. We did two ore sorting uh, lab tests and met tests and we were able to demonstrate that you could sort over 50% of the volume that you're gonna mine and concentrate that by nearly double the grade. So you're, you're gonna reduce a lot by the transportation costs and handling and you're gonna be sending double the mine grade to the mill. Oh, you'll see that later. So that's another view of the project. It's the geology is the base here. You can see all those little dots are the historically demonstrated and intersected gold intersections on the property. You can see that the, most of the gold lies along the Cadillac Fault, but you can see a splay coming off to the north there. And there's a tight uh, structural control between the fault and intersecting uh, north faults. And that creates some really cigar shaped shoots. Um, so there's a lot of room to move and, and grow this um, across the property scale. I've left the former property boundary just to show you the impact of property boundaries on drilling a system. You can see the gaps there where the former property boundaries were, and you'll get a better sense of that one in the next map. I'm gonna focus only on the, on the gold system itself. There's a vertical slice through the system. Uh, we've, we, we've only expanded it to workable distances from the current um, underground infrastructure. So a kilometer and a half to the east and to the west. And, and we haven't gone below 1.6 kilometers, which we feel is something we can manage from surface drilling. Um, the former property boundaries were actually over here. Oh, back up here. They were actually over here and over here. So you can see that by acquiring the ground, the system keeps growing. The ounce count will keep growing, but you can also see that the center of gravity of the system known to date, well, would have shifted. If you were to sink the shaft today, instead of in the 1960s where it was sunk, uh, you'd probably sink it right down in the East Chimo mine area. Well, that's also the, P, the ongoing PA is, is considering how we're gonna attack this thing. The next slide. Well, the next slide simply shows the historic growth of this thing. Um, right after dime, uh, we got the drill program rolling in 2017, we did a first resource estimate in 19, a second in 2020, a third in 2021, a fourth that was driven by the acquisition of the East Cadillac project. Um, and the drilling that we're doing right now is set or is designed to get us over the 3 million ounce mark. So fundamentally the next catalyst, the next catalyst in the next uh, three to six months is ex drilling the known extensions, upgrading the resource estimate and with new drill results, completing the PEA and continuing to design and do the engineering on this thing. Uh, that's about it. And that's a piece of ore that uh, some, an underground geologist at the time actually brought to the office. So the Chimo mine gold system does have these spectacular high grade uh, shoots, uh, but that's only about 25% of the ore. Thank you.